But today, I want to talk about in this, um, the um, frustration of being extraordinary in ordinary places, I want to talk about the temptations of success. The temptations of success. One of the things that we can uh, determine and is very clear when we're looking at the life of Joseph is that God is very much into us being successful. Uh, there was nothing about Joseph's life, and we saw uh, even in his highs and his lows that we saw him in places of success, and it was not of his own. His success was all divine. Uh, there was nothing that he had done, but it was God's grace. It was it was God that prospered him, and we'll look at this more in the word. And it is God that makes us extraordinary. That definition of extraordinary is very unusual or remarkable, exceptional in character. The word tells us that we are a peculiar people. We are a royal priesthood. That's what the Bible says. I, I didn't make it up. This is not what I'm saying about you. It doesn't matter what your mom and dad ever affirmed or did not affirm over your life, but the scripture says that we are a peculiar people. We are of a royal priesthood. We have been called of God and we are called by God. Amen. Uh, to do extraordinary things. Jesus said greater works. He said, you, you're going to do some works, but greater works than these shall you do, even greater than what Jesus did. And it takes uh, you being an extraordinary person to be able to function at that particular level. Joseph now is extraordinary. He's a very different person. And we talked about it a little bit last week, that when you are a different person uh, uh you know the the modern term is is you are a unicorn or an alien you know people say i'm an alien i'm a unicorn i have to figure that all out you know what i mean you're an alien okay i got it now uh, you know and that's what we are we we are like that in the kingdom of god we are we are almost uh mythical if if, if i can say it that way because who else can do these things that the word says that we can do? And I believe we can do all of those things. He said, these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. They will cast out devils. He said that they will lay hands on the sick and the sick will be healed. He said that you can raise the dead. Come on. He, he said that you will speak with new tongues. He said you can take up serpents and scorpions and nothing will hurt you. That seems uh, very mythical in proportion portion that seems like something from the marvel uh, uh verse or whatever from a marvel movie but you had these abilities long before stan lee ever wrote anything about marvel come on you had it you had it and and, and in the in the days of the bible we, uh, they operated at that particular level of the supernatural and when you're in the kingdom the supernatural is just a natural way of life but let's look at this Success comes with some temptations. There, there are some doorways. There are some entryways. There are some exit ways. When you are, are a successful person and you find yourselves in certain positions in life that you don't fall for what we call in the hood the okie doke. Come on. That, that, that you don't fall for these temptations or these pitfalls that the enemy would have for you. It says here, uh, let's look at some things about about uh, Joseph at this particular point. Because where we last left off, he had been uh, left by his brothers. They had betrayed him. And then he sold into slavery. And here he comes in slavery. Even as a slave, favor is on his life. Tell your neighbor to the left and the right, no matter what state you're in, favor is still operating on your life. I don't care what your bank account looks like right now, how you feel, how folks are treating you, where you are, what zip code you are, you're in right now. You have favor. And it said, and Joseph was brought down to Egypt and to Potiphar, an officer, Pharaoh, captain of the guard, an Egyptian, brought him of the hands of the Ishmaelites, which he had brought him down thither. And the Lord was with Joseph, and he was a prosperous man, and he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian, 
And his master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord made all that he did to prosper in his hand. And Joseph found grace in his sight and he served him and he made him overseer over his house and all that he had he put into his hand. And it came to pass from the time that he had made him overseer in his house and over all that he had that the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake. You better underline that. And the blessing of the Lord was upon all that he had in the house and in the field. And he left all that he had in Joseph's hand, and he knew not aught he had, save the bread which he did eat. And Joseph was a goodly person and well favored. Now, here comes the, the, the point of temptation. And it came to pass after these things that his master's wife cast her eyes upon Joseph and she said, lie with me. But he refused and said unto his master's wife, behold, my master, what if not what is with me in the house? And he have committed all that he have to my hand. There is none greater in his house than I. Neither hath he kept back anything from me but thee, because thou art his wife. How then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? And it came to pass as she spake to Joseph day by day that he hearkened not unto her to lie by her or to be with her. And it came to pass about this time that Joseph went into the house to do his business. And there was none of the men of the house there within. And she caught him by his garment and saying, lie with me. And he left his garment in her hand and fled and got him out. And it came to pass when she saw that he had left his garment in her hand and was fled forth that she called unto the men of her house and spake unto them, saying, See, he hath brought in an Hebrew unto us to mock us. He hath came in unto me to lie with me, and I cried with a loud voice. And it came to pass, when he heard that I lifted up my voice and cried, that he left his garment with me and fled and got him out. And she said, Laid up his garment by her until his Lord came home. And she spake unto him according to these words, saying, The Hebrew servant which thou hast brought unto us came in unto me to mock me. And it came to pass, as I lifted up my voice and cried, that he left his garment with me and fled out. And it came to pass, when his master heard the words of his wife, which she sp spake unto him, saying, After this manner did the servant to me that his wrath was kindled and Joseph's master took him and put him into the prison and placed where the king's prisoners were bound and she was there in the prison I want to talk about quickly the temptations of success now in the evolution of the soul and let's look at this text first before we get to the natural let me deal with the spiritual in the evolution of the soul uh, Potiphar's wife represents uh, what we call the sense consciousness it's your awareness of life living through your senses and your senses only goes uh, according to desire and uh, our biggest desires are usually for the things that we cannot have. That's why you got to be very careful because when you can't have it, you know what I'm talking about. When you go to a restaurant and you want something, but that particular day they just don't have or they're out of what you wanted. You know, you get there and they're all out of crawfish. You know, that's what we do down here. And, you know, they're all out. So what happens is, is you have a taste, you have a craving until you get it. You know, you get there and the place is closed. So now that that location is closed, you know there's another one on the other side of town, but you don't have enough time to get there because you have two or three other things to do. So what that craving stays with you until you get it. Well, that's how temptation begins to work with us. When we 
are, are, there are things that we cannot have that are not available to us. The craving or the desire to get it stays with us and we do every possible thing to achieve it and to get it. So now uh, Joseph let us know that Potiphar had given him everything in his house. He had access to every single thing in his house except his wife. When you're an extraordinary person, you've got to walk in a level of humility and character that you don't allow your senses and your desires uh, to cause you to go after the things uh, that are not for you to go after. You see, sometimes you could be in one position, but you don't want your position anymore because you're right under the CEO or you're right next to the president. So you begin to covet what they have or covet the position that they have. So before you know it, you will begin to lose out on who you are and lose focus on what God has called you to do and what God has given you because you're going after the very thing that he already told you that you could not have. It's the same thing that happened in the Garden of Eden. He said you could have, you could eat of any tree, but this one tree is the one that you just can't have. And that's the one that the serpent or desire, the serpentine consciousness, the, the serpent represents desire, comes in, and desire uh, pushes you, nudges you to follow the temptation to take of what you cannot have. And so you've got to be very careful as an extraordinary person that you don't waste or squander your divine destiny, your divine rights uh, for a momentary piece of pleasure. You see, uh, talk back to me. It, it was just a moment. See, we got to begin to think about these things. And this is why I say it's frustrating to be an extraordinary person because your position sometimes demands that you stay quiet when you want to cuss. Oh, come on. Your, your, your position demands that you remain in peace when you want to fight. Your position, who you are and where you are in life and, and the place that you're in, you know, you just want to throw shade, but you can't. You always have to be a graceful person and a gracious person. Even in life, you know, this, this society that we live in, and I was talking about this with a friend and yesterday, our culture today is a culture of having this cake and eating it too. You know, folks today want their man and the next woman's man and the next man's woman and the woman that they have. You know, that's just the kind of society we live in today. We want our cake and we want to eat it too. I want to keep the cake and eat the cake, but keep the cake. It never made sense to me as a child. How can you have your cake and eat it too? But that's the, that is a temptation that we have to be watchful of. The thing that Joseph said to Potiphar's wife, and she represents this sense consciousness. She's appealing to his, his desire. Because apparently, though the, the text doesn't tell us, but in his human mind, I'm sure in his human mind, just being a human, that Joseph probably thought and visualized what it would be like to be Potiphar. Although he had charge of Potiphar's house, in charge of Potiphar's uh, possessions, he still wasn't Potiphar. He maybe at some point had a desire, because I'm just believing in my imagination that if Potiphar's wife was doing all of this, the girl must have been bad. She must have been fine. And so I'm just, you know, it's just me just being me. I'm sure at some point he was just a good man. He was nice. The Bible says he was good looking. He was a good man. He probably paid her a little bit more attention than Potiphar had paid to her because he was successful. He was busy. And then the woman started having a dream about the dreamer and decided that she wanted to have an encounter with him. You got to watch that temptation because what, what he says to her is Joseph says to her, he said, I, I can't do this. He said, I, I cannot go back on what God has done. God has blessed me. The Lord blessed him. Notice the fifth verse said over and over that the Lord blessed him. The Lord put him in this place. That the Lord made him prosper. That the Lord made the Egyptian's house prosper because 
of him for Joseph's sake. God will cause places to prosper just to keep you in the position. So you've got to be very careful that you don't fall into this sense nature and your own desires to have what you ain't supposed to have, to lose all that God has given to you for just one five-minute moment of pleasure. A lot of times, it, you know, it said he refused. He refused, and it says that she came in day after day, day after day. The temptation is demanding. When you look at what she said in the Hebrew, she essentially said to him, sex now. <laughs> she really in Hebrew said two words. She wasn't trying to, you know, man, you know, you look good and you know, hey, Poppy. She wasn't doing none of that. She she just said, hey, you know, let's get it on now. That's what she said, now. And he said, what? He said, I refuse. He said, all that the master has put it in my hand. And the Bible says she came, what, day after day, seven days. Notice something here. The attraction to Joseph from the people around him was based upon what they saw he could do. One of the things you got to be careful about as an extraordinary person is you must be discerning of folks' motives that want to attach themselves to you. Are you really with me because of me? Are you really want to be with me because of what's following behind me? Is it really because I'm who I am? You know, because if you really like me, you like all of me. The good, the bad, the ugly, the indifferent. Or do you really just want to be with me or connected with me or go to brunch with me only because of who I know or what you have perceived about me? In, in our need to be social, in our need to have friends, in our needs to be accepted because remember we talked about it last week that ordinary folks don't ex don't understand extraordinary people and so extraordinary people oftentimes find themselves uh, abused by ordinary folks uh, out of a desire just to have some company y'all ain't talking to me out of a desire just to have some friends uh, out of the desire of just to seem normal. I just want to be an accepted person. I just want to be a normal person. I just want to have a real friend. And if you talk to most people uh, who are extremely wealthy, a lot of times their closest friend and confidant don't have anything that they have. Most of the time, their closest friend and confidant is not even interested in the life that they live. They're, they're not interested in Rolls Royces, yachts, or anything like that. You would be amazed that, that that's the person that they find themselves being their closest confidant. So extraordinary people. The Bible said he was already prosperous. Say, I'm already prosperous. You're already a prosperous person. He's in the house. The house is blessed because he's there. Uh, business is going good he has favor on his life favor has followed him but in an instant he has to make a decision am I going to give in to the demands because Potiphar's wife is demanding the Bible says she comes day by day understand this that the frustration of the extraordinary is that this is just not a one time proposal it comes to you over and over and over again and so we really have to be careful when we find ourselves in places and positions that we don't squander that place or that position and, and let's go beyond uh, sexual desires right now uh, or just for our desire to be accepted by certain people. What we see with uh, Potiphar's wife is an abuse of social privilege. We see an abuse of her social privilege. We see her being oppressive in nature because she's putting these demands on him. She has certain privileges socially. She is 
Potiphar's wife. The man is the captain. She's running it. She's the one that all the housewives uh, want to go to lunch with and have tea with. She, she, has, she has some connections. She can make some phone calls. She can connect you with two or three friends. But in the hindsight of it, he could have lost everything that God had positioned him for. The favor that was on his life, the power God had given given to him and the position God had given him only because by connecting with this woman by get one of the virgins said come get in the bed with me tell the person on the left and the right to you be careful who you get in the bed with and, and, and don't think about that in the physical sense because some of us get in the bed with folks at work that we don't need to be getting in the bed with because I want a promotion you say I got my eye on position so we get in the we get connected with people there are a lot of people that get caught up in all kinds of uh, scams and embezzlement you know because I wanted to be around these people so they brought me in on it and the next thing you know all of y'all going to get some federal time all of y'all going to jail and your attorney is up there said, but you know, she was a good woman. She had a clean record. You know, she was just a victim of circumstances. We have to be quite careful about this because sometimes uh, folks that have privileges in oppressive systems and oppressive societies uh, can offer you just a little bit that'll make you feel like you are some odd better than the rest of them. And before you know it, you squandered everything that God has laid up for you divinely come on I got to be careful about this she was demanding she was she was exacting you know she's trying to say to him don't you know who I am don't you know what I could do for you you know don't you know what what I can make you become this is nothing Potiphar's house come on I can take you all the way to Pharaoh I can I can get you there but somebody shout I'm already prosperous see the thing the thing the thing that Joseph understood was is Joseph was a precursor to Jesus. See, Jesus went through this in the wilderness. And so when Satan went to tempt Jesus and said, I'm going to give you this and I'm going to give you that, Jesus just said, Satan, get thee behind me. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Call the angels. You, 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 you're not supposed to tempt the Lord. I will not tempt the Lord. Because Jesus walked in the situation understanding that I've already got it. So it's really nothing that you can offer to me because I am already am that. So when you come into the situation knowing that I'm already prosperous, uh, I'm already in the position, uh, I've already got the skill set, that the position is mine, the promotion is mine, that where I am right now is just a process, uh, then you know I don't have to hook, scheme, uh, borrow, I don't have to do any types of scams, scandals, uh, I don't have to suck up to nobody, I don't have to brown nose to anybody, I don't have to bow down, I don't have to kiss nobody's feet, uh, why? Because I've already got it. Somebody shot, I've already got it. I, I walked in exceptional. Let me declare to you, somebody listening to me, somebody watching this right now, your story is getting ready to change. Come on and shout, something's getting ready to happen. Something's getting ready to happen. Uh, oh, come on, declare it. something's about to happen. Uh, something, and let me prophesy that thing to you. That something wonderful, something miraculous, uh, something great uh, is getting ready to happen in your life uh, and this is just a process uh, that you must go through see there are only degrees between an ordinary person uh, and an extraordinary person uh, the extraordinary person uh, is the only one that it makes them different uh, is the way that they think uh, that they have zeroed in uh, and that they have focused themselves uh, on what God has called me to do uh, who God have called me to be wherever that he is uh, if it's in the education system uh, if it's in the banking system uh, if it's in technology uh, it don't have to be in the pulpit uh, oh but tell the person to the left and the right of you that God's getting ready to do something special uh, in the places where you are come on uh, in the space uh, that you're occupying right now uh, the anointing for extraordinary is getting ready to show up uh, and so you've got to be careful uh, that in this season and this time uh, that you don't give in to the demands uh, 
because you understand that I've already got it. I've already got this position. I've already got this thing. But the Bible said in his process of running, the mistake that he made is that he left his garment behind. Now let me be a prophet right now. I speak in the spirit that wherever you left your garments, that the Lord will recover your garment right now. She was able to take his cloak and make accusations against him. Now this is the warfare side of it. I shut down every system. I shut down every evidence. I shut down any scandal. I shut down what they knew about you in your 20s. I shut down what they knew about you as a teenager that it will not show up where you are to hinder your future. What they can take from your past will not be brought into your present to hinder your future. I need somebody to declare I recover my cloak right now. I'm recovering my cloak. He left his cloak behind. He did right for refusing. He did well when he ran, but where he messed up was is the boy left some evidence behind him. Oh, I need y'all to begin to declare that I'm recovering evidence. Oh, hallelujah. I'm, I'm, I'm reclaiming whatever the evidence is that the enemy will try to use against me. I'm just going to recover it wherever it is. If it's in Asia, if it's in Africa, if I left it in Australia, if it's in California, come on, if I left it in Alabama, if it's hanging out in Tennessee, I don't care where it is right now. If it's in a computer, if it's in a picture, if it's on Facebook, somebody shout, I'm scrubbing it clean right now in the name of Jesus. Come on. Why, why can I declare that? Because the Bible said, uh, though our sins were like scarlet. Uh, hallelujah. That Jesus came uh, and he took his crimson blood uh, and he made them white as snow. Uh, that he covered the slate. Uh, somebody shout, I'm covering the slate. Uh, see, it's, it, it's frustrating uh, when you're an extraordinary person uh, and ordinary people got the dirt on you. It's a frustrating place to be in. It'll keep you out of places. It'll keep you from running for political office. It'll keep you from applying for the job. It'll keep you from going to school. It'll keep you from going to certain circles. Because as soon as you get in there, you see somebody that knows something about you. Oh, but I need a church to shout, it's over. Come on, I, I scrubbed it clean right now. I need y'all to give God the praise and began to shout and declare that there is no evidence against me. Come on, begin to declare that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Oh, come on and bless him right now. Hallelujah. I said, come on and bless him. Uh, come on and bless him right now. That Potiphar's wife's spirit, that spirit comes to bring allegation against you. But let me tell you how you deal with allegation. The Bible said that they were overcome by the blood of the lamb and the words of their testimony. The testimony is what will bring you over allegation. Or tell your neighbor, you can't tell my business better than I can. Hallelujah. If you want to shut a gossiper down, you talk the gossip yourself. Hallelujah. You tell your own story. And you know how we do over here for Bell and Light. We ain't going to tell it for free baby we're gonna write a book oh come on we're gonna make a workbook we're gonna make a series out of it we're gonna make an e-course out of it and you know what you can learn all about my story but you're gonna pay for it in the process oh somebody shout i'm not gonna fall for the temptations of success because the temptation is is for me to squander you see what potiphar's wife comes to do is to derail the dream he already saw what he was going. You already saw where you're going. You already saw what God have called you to. You've already seen the way you're supposed to be living. You've already seen what's in your bank account. But Potiphar's wives come along in many forms in many places to derail the dream. But shout, my dream will no longer be derailed. There will be no derailment of my dream. This is a good place for me to close on here. You see, there's no derailment uh, 
he left it behind. You've got to be careful in this season, in the evolution of your soul. You've got to be watchful not to give into the desires of your flesh. You've got to be watchful in this season because what happens is, is when you do not appeal to sense consciousness, sense consciousness, when you ignore destructive habits, then you'll find yourself locked up. And that's exactly what she did. Since you won't get in the bed with me, since you won't hang out with me, since you won't lay down with me, I'm going to lock you up and put you in prison. And that's what they try to tell you. Since you won't hang out with me, you're not going to get that promotion. Since you don't do what I told you to do, I'm not going to give you that recommendation. Since you didn't go where I told you to go, to hang out with me, I'm not going to give you that referral. But somebody shout, I'm already extraordinary. He's already given it to me. It's already mine. The dream, I shall live it. I shall achieve this goal. Shout, it's turning around for me. It's just a process that we've all got to go through in the manifestation of your ordinariness. But you've got to wake up your soul and stay in the presence of God. The way that Joseph was able to overcome Potiphar's wife is because he remained in the presence of God. And that's when the principles of this church uh, is that we daily practice the presence of God. Uh, I'll meditate on God. Uh, I'll sit in the presence of God. Uh, I'll worship till I feel God. Uh, I'm going to speak till I feel God. Uh, I'm going to affirm God. Uh, I'm going to visualize God. Uh, shout I see only good. Uh, and I see only God. Uh, I see only God. Uh, and I see only good. I'm going to work the principles until the principles work. They might ostracize you. You might get locked out. But shout is just for a season. Because he went to prison. He went from the pit in the Potiphar's house. From Potiphar's house. He goes to prison. But shout hang on in there. After the prison, he went into the palace shake your neighbor's hand like you're gonna shake it off and tell him welcome to the palace I know you're in the prison and we'll talk about the prison next week because the prison is the place where they're gonna really see your gifts manifest but when you get to Potiphar's house it's simply to see your integrity the frustration of the of the extraordinary is to remember integral when there's every situation for you to act a fool now if I wasn't on YouTube I'd have added another word to it but I ain't gonna say that word I don't for me to act a fool but shout I'm not gonna act no fool I'm gonna walk this thing out because it's turning for me right now I'm on my way shout I'm on my way I'm on my way I'm on my way Come on, begin to declare, I'm on my way to a new way of living. I'm on my way to new levels of living, to new fellowships. I'm getting ready to embrace new circles, new heights, each and every day. God's getting ready to add some commas and zeros to your bank account. God's getting ready to bring out of you multiple streams of income. God's getting ready to bless your family. God's getting ready to bless your children. Now, tell your neighbor, don't fall into temptation. But tell them, stand, 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 stand on his promises. Come on and give him the praise. Woo, I feel that thing. Come on, I feel some shifts in this place. There's some shifts that's getting ready to happen. Lift your hands and close your eyes and just begin to praise God for it. 
for those shifts that's getting ready to happen. The lie won't work. She lied on him. She tried to mess him up. They'll lie on you. I know they'll lie on you. But you get ready to outlive the lie. If you ever want to master a scandal, Nathan, the way you master a scandal is that you learn to outlive it. Somebody declare, I'm getting ready to outlive some things. Woo! Shake it, Tandala la Masaya. Oh, come on and bless him, bless him, bless him, bless him, bless him. Come on, I'm going to outlive it. Tell your neighbor, you're going to live to see it happen. All right, it's time for me to leave you alone. But I just feel Jesus in this place. Oh, we bless his holy name. Come on, put your hands together. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's a new day. It's a new season that we are walking into, that we are embarking. Declare this with me. I'm an extraordinary person. And I will not squander my extraordinariness for temporary pleasure. Hallelujah. The light of God surrounds you. The love of God enfolds you. The power of God protects you. The presence of God watches over you. Wherever we are, God is. And so it is. Amen. God bless you.